Welcome back to the Aubergine Chef. Now today we're going to do something a little simple. We're just going to make basic cracker dough. But the beauty of this recipe is that it's a master recipe and that it can be changed and manipulated in different ways. But this recipe will always come out consistent and is very reliable. So feel free to use different kinds of liquids, to add eggs, to use all kinds of different spices and herbs as I show you later on how we do it. But basically this is a very reliable uh, cracker dough and it tastes great without having to change the dough at all really. Um, so, well, let me tell you a little bit about the recipe. Actually, I actually got this recipe when I was working at one of the resorts. Um, they have a brunch thing, and one of the things that we were doing as um, the bake shop, in addition to preparing rolls and stuff, was to make crackers for the spreads and for the tapas and, and so on and so forth. And uh, my chef actually encouraged me to write down a lot of these recipes because he knew that they were such great, reliable recipes and that they can be used in a variety of ways. Uh, so I'm really glad that I'm able to share a, you know, a resort recipe with some other home bakers out there. So why don't we go ahead and get started. It's very simple. Um, I have one pound of all-purpose flour, a quarter ounce of salt, seven-eighths ounces of sugar, and a quarter ounce of baking powder on the mixer. Now I sifted everything together except for the sugar, which I added in after I sifted it, um, to help break up any chunks and to help mix and aerate the ingredients. Um, I also have five ounces of cold water. We might not need all of it. We may need a little bit more. Um, we're trying to achieve a certain consistency, and I'll tell you more about that when we get there. I also have half an ounce of port wine. You should feel free to use whatever wine you have on hand if you have any leftover red wine or white wine, um, because you know you only need half an ounce. So it'd be kind of a shame to buy a whole bottle just for the half an ounce. And we also have six and a half ounces of butter. Let me go get that. And I have the butter cut up into small pieces, and I'll show you before we put it into the mixer what, how, about how big you're aiming for. And you want to make sure that they're cold and not necessarily room temperature, because we're not trying to make necessarily like a, like a cookie dough, but we're trying to make it more of a dry dough, like a scone or um, like biscuits. So we want them to be a little chunky and not so evenly dispersed. So now that we've gone over all the ingredients, why don't we go ahead and go over to the mixer before my butter um, warms up. Okay, so you want to go ahead and use a paddle attachment for this. And basically you're looking for pieces about this big. Um, pea size, maybe a little bit bigger. You don't have to be completely perfect. If you've got larger pieces, go ahead and use them. Just in general, you want to have smaller sized pieces. And then what we're going to do is we're going to mix this on low speed until it comes together and looks like coarse uh, cornmeal. Okay, after your butter gets mixed in pretty well, and you can see that it's kind of coarse um, in the texture, but you still have decent sized chunks of butter in there too. So the butter is not completely incorporated, but it's going to have a nice uh, marbled look to it when it's finished and when you, have, when you have it rolled out. We don't want it to be completely uniform. So we're going to go ahead and add in our half an ounce of port wine. Let that mix in. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and slowly add in our five ounces of water until it starts to look like biscuit dough. Basically you don't want it to be really sloshy, but you don't want it to be very dry either. You want all the dough to come together in a ball, but you don't want to have any pieces uh, or any water on the bottom of the bowl at the bottom of the bowl where it's sloshing around. I'm just gonna add like a little bit more water. Probably like half an ounce and it should come together just very nicely. Okay, at this point you just want to go ahead and knead your dough together, bring it together to a nice ball. Don't need to knead it very long, just want to bring all the pieces together. And then we're going to cover it with some plastic wrap or kitchen towel. And we're just going to let it rest for about 20 minutes. And this resting period allows the proteins in the dough that we kind of like agitated and worked up while we were mixing it, it allows it to relax so that way it holds its shape better when we roll it out and that it doesn't fight us while we're, while we're rolling it out. So give it a good 20 minutes. Now if you wanted to, at this point, um, you can put this in the refrigerator, um, you can freeze it, and then you can thaw it out or let it warm up to room temperature, you know, a little lower than that. And then you can use it right away. So this is a great make-ahead recipe as well. All right, so it's been about 20 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and lightly flour my work area. 
and we're going to roll it out until it's about a quarter of an inch thick. Okay, lift up your dough, kind of play with it a little bit. It's going to stretch back just a little bit, so that way it gives you a more accurate idea of how thick it is, as well as you can feel around and see if there are any thick areas. And the cool thing about this dough is that you can cut it into any shape you want. So once I, yeah, this is about as thick as I want it to be. So before I forget, because I will, knowing me, you want to dock your dough. And if you have a dough docker, works great. Just give it a, cool, a few pushes and you're done. If you've got a fork like I do, then you're going to have to s go ahead and just poke holes in the dough until the, all the dough is docked. I'll show you just about how many you probably need. All right, so that should be a good amount. Basically, you want the dough to have a plenty amount of holes, especially depending on the size that you're going to cut it in. Um, if you're doing smaller sizes, obviously you probably want a little bit more holes because your smaller pieces, you want to make sure they all have holes. Larger pieces, as long as there's a couple holes throughout it, you'll be okay. And what the holes do is it helps prevent them from rising too much because we want them to be thin, crispy crackers. We don't want them to be big, puffy biscuits. So we're going to go ahead and cut them. I'm just going to do just random shapes. So I'll probably just cut it into strips. Obviously, if you want to be more exact, feel free to measure it. But this is just this is just a rustic dough. But you do want to try and make them close to about the same shape. So when you bake them, they all bake about the same time. Now the scraps you can save and re-roll again, just taking off any of the end pieces that don't really make a full cracker. Those little end pieces, if you bake them off, are a good snack for you if you're doing this for the holidays and you don't have really a chance to sit down and eat, uh, eat a good lunch, they're really great snacks to eat, munch on. And so what I'm going to do now, now this is up to you, if you want to egg wash them now and spice them, you can do that now, but I find that it gets a little bit messy and a little bit hard to handle. So what I like to do is I like to bring them over to my sheet pan, load them onto my sheet pan, and then egg wash them and spice them. Okay, so now this is the fun part. Not necessarily the egg washing part, but the seasoning them because you like I said earlier you can season them with any kind of herb and spice that you have in your cabinet as long as it's a dry herb or a dry spice because you don't want to try and mix any fresh herbs into the dough you can if you want to but not too much because you want to add too much moisture um, additional moisture to it but the dry herbs kind of get absorbed by the dough and you know everyone has dry herbs and spices in their cabinets so this makes them a really flexible and a really fun recipe so the first thing you need to do is you need to egg wash your crackers now I'm going to use a spray bottle and it's just a regular spray bottle you can get from the travel section of a you know supermarket or a superstore and um, the spray bottle works a little bit better than a pastry brush because you're not sitting here having to brush each one individually but also when you're brushing it sometimes you get pools of egg wash on your sheet and it kind of forms this weird crispy thing after you bake it and then you have to break that off and this kind of kind of prevents that from happening sometimes it can still happen because you can you know the eggs will still cook but it makes it a little bit easier and a little bit faster especially if you're doing twice or three times this recipe so just give everything a good spray and this egg wash helps um, allow them to, well it gives them flavor obviously with the eggs and it gives them a nice shine, lets them get brown a little bit and it allows the spices and herbs to stick to the cracker dough. And So what I just put on was a little bit of sea salt, I'm going to add in a little bit of black pepper I'm using cracked black pepper and we're going to add some sesame seeds. So these are going to be a little bit more savory than sweet but feel free to use a little bit more sweeter herbs and spices, it's fine. And that's pretty much it, they're ready to bake. So I'm going to go ahead and bake this while I get the rest of them ready. It should take about 8 to 12 minutes at 350 degrees. And you just want to bake them until they're done, they're golden brown, and they're nice and crispy.
All right, so the crackers came out of the oven. They're a little bit thicker than I was expecting them to um, to be, so I think maybe a quarter of an inch is probably a little bit too thick. Maybe an eighth of an inch or even thinner. Make them as thin as you can. Make them nice and thin and crispy. Um, if you're doing a quarter of an inch, it's fine. It's going to take a little bit longer to bake, probably about 20 to 30 minutes. It's a pretty big difference. Uh, just make sure that if you're doing more than one pan that you treat them like cookies. Make sure that you rotate your pans in the oven halfway through and make sure that you turn them around so that way the back part is now towards the front and the front part is towards the back. So every piece or every cookie gets kind of even heating throughout the oven. Okay, and that's pretty much it. That's a very basic cracker dough. Now, um, if you do plan on making triple the amount, which makes quite a bit. I have about three sheet pans of this and so I've got probably about 50 to 60 crackers. Um, if you do plan to use the triple batch, make sure you look at the recipe online because the triple batch is actually a little bit different in the ratio because of the way that it breaks down. So instead of using maybe three pounds of flour, you actually end up using five pounds of flour. So make sure you look that up online. Anyways, be sure to try different kinds of flavors, different kinds of herbs and spices. And uh, remember, the aubergine chef, demystifying dessert, and sometimes some savory foods, one recipe at a time.